Hey guys, Uma here from Dagron Gaming, and in this video, we'll be going over Shadowblade, Sanj, and the Silver Edge. This is going to be kind of a long video, because it will cover all of these items. I will try to give as much information as I can, but there will probably be some stuff that I leave out. If you want to skip ahead to the Shadowblade part, just click right here. Uh, if you want to skip to the Sanj part, click right here. And if you want to learn about the Silver Edge, just click right here. I will also put these timestamps in the description and at the end of the video. I'm going to start off with the Shadow Blade. The Shadow Blade is made from a Claymore and a Shadow Amulet, costing you a total of 2,800 gold. Both components are only available at the main shop in the fountain. Once completed, this item will give you plus 22 damage and plus 30 attack speed. Shadow Blade also has an active ability called Shadow Walk. This ability costs 75 mana and has a 28 second cooldown. After a 0.3 second fade time, this ability will make you invisible for 14 seconds and allows you to move 20% faster. Similar to phase boots, it also allows you to move through units. The invisibility will end once you attack though. It will also have 175 bonus damage for the single attack that breaks the invisibility. Now there are several things you should know about this item. Casting Shadow Walk will not interrupt any channeling spells. The bonus 175 damage can be reduced by things like Razor's Static Link and Bane's Enfeeble. This damage is also physical, meaning that armor will reduce it. However, it cannot be amplified by things like Empower for Magnus or the Double Damage Rune. The damage is considered by Lifesteal, Cleaves, and Splash, but will not impact any critical strikes. During the fade time, you are able to cast spells and attack without breaking the invisibility. This will also apply the bonus damage. Casting spells will break the invisibility. Even if the attack misses, the invisibility will still break. You can pick up and drop items without having to worry about it breaking invisibility. Heroes that have Shadow Blade in their default build include Drown Ranger, Kunkka, and Sniper. However, if you are a single target ganking hero, for example Bloodseeker, Slark, Tusk, and Ursa, this is a great item. Heroes that either split push or require an escape such as Nature's Prophet, can also get this item. An alternative to Shadow Blade is Blink Dagger. A Blink Dagger has a lower price and no mana cost, so it allow you to gank just as efficiently. The Shadow Blade, however, will give you a boost in damage and stats. It is very important to remember that having this item will most likely lead to the enemy placing sentry wards and carrying dust of detection to stop you. You are also at a greater risk of being caught out when your team already has an invisible hero, such as Ricky or Clinks. Again, a Blink Dagger is a good alternative. Much like the Shadow Blade, a Blink Dagger will allow you to move around more quickly, but not have to worry about being slowed by dust or being caught out by sentries. The second item in this video is the Sanj. This item is built from an Ogre Club, a Belt of Strength, and a Sanj recipe, costing you a total of 2,050 gold. The Belt of Strength may be bought from the side shops, but the Ogre Club and recipe must be bought at the fountain. Once completed, this item will give you plus 16 strength and plus 10 damage. If the hero is a strength hero, it would also grant an extra 16 damage for a total of 26 damage. Because this is a strength item, it will also add 304 health and 0.48 health regeneration. Sanj grants your hero a passive ability called Lesser Maim. Lesser Maim will slow the enemy's movement by 20% and attack speed by 20 for 4 seconds with a 15% chance to proc. Lesser Maim does not stack, but each proc will refresh the duration. Lesser Maim does stack with Maim from other items though. Sanj is one of those items that should always be turned into something else. Depending on the situation, this can be used to build a Heaven's Halberd, a Silver Edge, or a Sanj and Yasha. If you are building any of these and need a slow or the extra health and damage, this is a good starting component. But when you're building a Silver Edge, it is better to buy the Shadow Blade first, since you will most likely be using it to gank or escape an enemy. Last on the list is the Silver Edge. This item is composed of a Shadow Blade, a Sanj, and a Silver Edge recipe, costing you a total of 5,450 gold. Once built, this item will give you plus 16 strength, plus 32 damage, and plus 30 attack speed. An extra 16 damage is given to strength heroes for a total of plus 48 damage. This item combines the abilities of the Shadow Blade and the Sanj, so I will only include information that is new or different. For example, the bonus damage from Shadow Walk. This item gives you the passive Lesser Maim, which is the exact same effects as just having the Sanj. Now, to quickly review it, it has a proc chance of 15%, slows the target's movement speed by 20%, and the attack speed by 20 for 4 seconds. Once again, this is a very good passive as it slows down your target and makes it harder for them to fight back or run away. Silver Edge has an active ability called Shadow Walk, similar to the Shadow Blade. This ability costs 75 mana and has a 24 second cooldown. After a 0.3 second fade time, you will become invisible. This invisibility will last 14 seconds. While invisible, you will move 20% faster and phase through units. 
Similar to Shadow Blade, you also gain bonus damage when attacking to break invisibility, and an ability known as Break. You will gain a bonus 225 damage, and will reduce an enemy's damage by 40% for 5 seconds in a single attack. This attack will also disable almost every enemy passive. To see a list of passives that Break will not disable, check out the description. Break will not disable any item passives, such as the auras for Mechanism or Assault Kiras. If an enemy is spell immune by any means, blacking bar, rage, or repel, their passives will not be disabled and their damage will not be reduced. The bonus damage, however, will still be applied. It is impossible to miss when using Break. Even Void's backtrack will not avoid the hit. This makes it a great way to deal with heroes like Phantom Assassin that have their own evasion. Remember that this will not stop item passives, so any evasion the hero receives from an item is still applied. Silver Edge is a great item for heroes that are single target gankers. The invisibility allows you to sneak up on an enemy, the break ability allows you to disable their passives and reduce their damage, and the lesser maim keeps them from running away or fighting back. Heroes like Slark, Bloodseeker, and Tusk all benefit from this. If you are playing against heroes with annoying passives, this is a great way to counter them. It is very important to remember that all items are situational. If you simply can't afford to buy a Silver Edge, buy something that increases farm instead. If you don't really need to disable any passives, keep the Shadow Blade and use Assange to build Assange and Yasha, or Heaven's Halberd instead. It is completely up to you. That will do it for this video. If you want to go back and review anything, here are the timestamps for the items. I will also put these in the description below. Make sure to show this to any new players you might know that want to learn more about how items work. Please like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Follow us on Twitter to get more updates on new videos. Thank you for watching.